Okay. Hello everyone and uh, thanks for joining us today. We are going to um, uh, today uh, we are going to have this live webinar uh, organized as part of uh, National Apprenticeship Week. Today we are going to talk about uh, how to apply for an apprenticeship, uh, top tips uh, to be successful, and we'll also have the opportunity to hear from some amazing apprentices currently working at Capgemini. Uh, this webinar will be uh, recorded and uh, will be accessible through the um, Career Secondi YouTube channel. And joining us today um, are Michelle Perkins, Molly, Georgia and Raj uh, from Capgemini. And uh, welcome all and thank you again for taking the time today uh, to speak to our student. Great, thank you very much. So welcome everyone. Um, as you know, it's National Apprentice Week and so we're especially pleased to be here uh, for that. I'm just going to uh, flip over and show a few um, slides if that's okay with everybody. My name is Michelle Perkins and I look after the work that Cap Gemini does with young people um, and in particular to show you and showcase to you the great opportunities we have with apprenticeships in um, our sector. What we thought we'd do today is I'll just give a very lightning overview of Cap Gemini. Um, and then I'm going to let the um, apprentices who've been through the process share their experience. Uh, we're quite happy for questions, so please, if you've got a question, jump in. You don't need to wait or type them in the chat box, whatever's um, going to work for you. I think if I was going to give a tip, because this was uh, the question um, that was just posed to us, I think my first and my number one tip would be to take some opportunities. Um, so to do something like work experience and Cap Gemini has a work experience program. So I'll pop that in the chat and um, you absolutely are welcome to apply for our work experience program if you haven't had an opportunity to do that before. Um, and it's really a, a great opportunity for you to get the, the sort of access to that kind of experience and more importantly, for you to connect and, and to have um, contacts and make a network in that area. So Cap Gemini. So Cap Gemini is um, well over 300,000 people plus. We work out of 50 plus countries. And what we're really famous for is that we work with our clients to help their organization function better. So sometimes this might be bringing in um, new ways to market. So it might be ways that, that their customer, the end customer can help um, we can interact with that particular client. It might be new divisions, um, acquisitions. It might be realigning, reorganizing. It can be any number of um, things that a client will get greater back value from. And that at Capgemini's people, and you're about to meet three of them, we are the product of Capgemini. So if you think about a company like Vodafone, or you think about Ferrari, or you think about um, Nike or um, Heinz, you know, you can think about things like cars and beans and things like that. They're all the products. But actually, Capgemini, we are the products. And this means that the people are the very most important part of Capgemini because we're the people that face off to the client. We're the people that deliver for the clients. Um, you can see here, uh, the um, range of services that Capgemini offers and in particular some of our fabulous clients. We have some really, really cool client um, clients. We're really very, very lucky in this sense. Um, and we work across so many sectors from the public sector to retail to transportation, financial services. And when Raj speaks, he's actually in our FS team. So that might be something that you guys are interested in. Um, so I'm going to introduce to start off with, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I think it's nowhere near as nice as seeing the human. Um, so I'm going to kick off with asking Georgia if she just say a few words about how she came to be at Cap Gemini um, and a little bit about her role. And I, what I'd stress to you is that you know what's most important when you're applying for a job is to understand a little bit about that company and what it is you're applying for. Georgia, welcome. Well, thank you. Um, so yeah, obviously I'm Georgia. Um, I'm a business operations analyst at Capgemini. Um, I'm currently on the Chartered Management Degree Apprenticeship, um, which will result in me achieving a business and leadership degree um, from Aston University in Birmingham. Um, as I said earlier, I've been at Capgemini for a year and a half, um, but I started my apprenticeship um, last September. 
Um, like you here today, um, I listened to an event like this where Cap Gemini was kind of presented to me, um, and I then went on to take place in the work experience program in the summer of 2019. Um, I was in year 12 at this point, um, and this was an extremely useful week for me. Um, as you know, immediately I felt like this was an organisation that I could see myself in. Um, you know, I spent the week kind of rotating. I didn't kind of, you know, spend it in a specific role or a specific area. I kind of just, you know, floated around a bit to see what was out there. Um, and I then went and applied to um, for the degree apprenticeship later on. Um, I began the interview um, process. So it was an online form um, with some scenario situations of, you know, what would you do if you were in this situation? How would you react to this? Um, and as this was all during the pandemic, this was all virtual. Um, I then went on to do a digital interview. So you have to record yourself answering questions, um, which sounds quite daunting because there's nobody on the other end kind of reassuring you um, with your answers. Um, but definitely, definitely a good experience. Um, so, yeah, went on from then. And I think I was kind of, you know, a kind of dip in the pandemic. And I did kind of go in to meet some people. Um, a degree apprenticeship kind of you know it is it is a big task it's you know working full time and a degree on the side um and you know there's often a lot of questions people ask to me oh well how do you balance it how do you do this how do you do that my personal preference for balancing work and studying is that I obviously like to work through the week your nine to five which is you know as expected of you um I like to then spend time on university in the evening so that my weekends are then free um, some of the people that I kind of work alongside um, have a different opinion um, and would like to kind of spend, I don't know, their Sundays, for example, doing uni and have their weekends, um, their evenings free, sorry. Um, however, I'd rather just kind of get it all done Monday to Friday and have my weekend kind of um, relax. Um, I personally, a lot of my friends when I was leaving sixth form um, and college and things like that, a lot of my friends have gone to university um, and I kind of felt like, oh, should I be going to university? Should I be taking a different approach? Um, I kind of looked at both. I looked, I went to visit universities. I obviously went to careers events for apprenticeships and things like that. And I think my biggest piece of advice would be do what you want to do. Don't think, oh my gosh, you know, all of my friends are going to university. Like I feel like I should be be bold and, you know, kind of decide what you think you will do better in rather than where you think you'll fit in because you will fit in anywhere, especially Cap Gemini, um, I've kind of noticed. Um, and obviously just remember the pros and cons. So obviously a pro of an apprenticeship is that, you know, it can be long days, it can be um, it can be hard work, um, but you've just got to remember that, you know, it's, it's experience in, in the corporate world that, you know, university students, don't get unless they go and do those placement years um, it's the opportunity to earn you know a very competitive salary um, while getting you know proper experience where you can actually get embedded you know get embedded in a role rather than just you know going to work going on work experience for a week where you've got five days to make the most out of it um, this is a situation where you know there's opportunities to be promoted and to get more responsibility and to feel like you're actually contributing to something um, so it's definitely, definitely times where, you know, the workload is heavy and you think, oh, I could log off now and I could do this, I could do that. But for me personally, and I know a lot of people that I work with, they love, you know, the corporate aspect. Of, you know, I'm 19 years old um, and I feel like, you know, I've, I've got responsibility. I feel like I've got some direction in life. Um, and some of the events that we get to go to, um, careers fairs like this, like speaking to students, you know, it was once me sat there and I love the fact that I can, you know, now help people that once helped me. Um, so, yeah, just always ask Thank questions. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. That's fantastic. So, Molly, I saw you nodding there a lot when uh, Georgia was speaking. So, obviously, you've had some similar experiences. And I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about your role, because I think one of the things about, um, you know, applying for something is to understand a little bit about what's what you're going to be expected to do. So, maybe you could bring to life a little bit about your job. Yeah, of course. Um, so I initially attended an insight event and on the panel there was like five different people and I didn't realise like the the width, width, the width of um, positions of, of, 
available at Capgemini. So it's not just a tech firm. So I do a business degree. So I'm a uh, business operations analyst, the same as Georgia. So that just involves all things business related. So what I do is monitor people's capacity. So if a team, I look after a team of 20 people. So if they're 40 days over in month one, so the next month, then I say, what can we do to solve this problem? Have we got, um, do we need to recruit people? Um, are people going to work overtime? So I also look after holidays and sickness, if people need to be put on bench and things like that. It's really interesting and I think it's really important to note that Capgemini don't just want you to stay in one role. Um, I started as a PMO analyst, so that's um, based on projects, so I'll be looking at projects budgets and uh, the progression of a project that Capgemini are working on. Um, and we're really encouraged to rotate around the business to get a feel for like what suits us most. And I think that's really important to note. And that's what really attracted me to Capgemini. Thank you, Molly. That's brilliant. And I think, Raj, if I'm right in thinking this, I think um, that you too had some interaction at your school um, when you were the same age as the students who'll be listening to this to now and later. Um, and your role is slightly different because you're in FS, so maybe you could bring that to life. Yeah. Um, so hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. My name is Raj and Cat first came to my school. That's where I first heard about them. And from every other company that came or people um, what research I was doing on my own, I liked how CAP valued their employees, their mental well-being, their physical well-being. And being in the financial services, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of um, that is required of you, but they're there at the end, end of the day to support you. I've, the reason I went to CAP initially was the range of opportunity that's available. Like um, Georgia and Molly said, I'm sitting here right now talking to you. There's a lot that you can learn from. There's a lot that you can be a part of. And that's why I came here today. And being in financial services, the workload can be a lot, but it can be mainly managed, well, personally for me, by keeping your week organized, planning your days out. And like Georgia said, I know people may work on a Sunday or say put their workload on that day but I choose to block out days on my calendar to make sure I have time to focus on what I can do because if you don't keep up with the work that you do or you slip up a little bit it can get a bit daunting it can all build up so, yeah. great thanks Raj um Raj would you like to just say something about FS because you must work with some of the most interesting clients I mean obviously you can't discuss the clients but you know maybe you could give us an insight into some of the, the work that the FS team do um we provide insights on a lot of the data given us given to us by our financial clients it kind of comes all jumbled up doesn't really make sense so our task is to go in there organize it make sure that the client can see from a visual standpoint what's going on are they are, are their company progressing upwards is there somewhere they can make an improvement on and so we're helping them make better business decisions great thank you um so one of the questions we get asked an awful lot is about um a levels and what people did before they joined and and what cap gemini look for so i'm going to ask the team to share where they were when um a levels but just going to kind of share with you the cap gemini view and and so that you if you do decide to apply you'll um understand is we take we need for the university um level programs which are level six apprenticeships you do need three a levels we are not so interested in the subject. We are really interested, regardless of which level of apprenticeship you apply for, we are super, super interested in how passionate you are about technology and how passionate you are about working with other people and you know whether or not you want to come and work for Capgemini and you can only know if you want to come and work for Capgemini if you know something about the company so please do not apply um, if you haven't uh, actually found out something about Capgemini so I'm just going to answer this question and I'm Sorry, Rodiat, I hope that's your first name and I've I've not twisted it around, but um, and about is it only A levels we accept? Absolutely not. We take um, equivalents. So if you're doing BTECs or or whatever it is, that's absolutely great. If 
and I just stress the word here, if if you want to come on to one of the level six programs, you do need A levels or A level equivalents because that is a degree level program. The level three and level four programs are not like that and therefore you you know the the um the requirements are different but we do require um gcse maths and english i actually um have an apprentice in my team who's who's doing that at the moment so that's something that can be woven in if if there's a reason why you haven't got those um ready i hope i've answered your question but please do keep typing questions if you want to come off microphone and ask a question that's absolutely fine we'd we'd love to have you do that so um and what qualities oh okay here's the killer question so first of all i'm going to ask the team just to say something about their a levels and then we're going to do that quest that question it's the killer yeah absolutely georgia since you went first first time do you want to go first again and just let everyone know in a, a quick snapshot what did you do at a level yeah, so I did A level business studies, um, A level geography, and B tech IT. In I went to a sixth form. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I did those three. Perfect, Molly. You're on mute, by the way, Molly. Oh, you're off. Yeah, Good. just taking that. Out. <laughs> so I did nothing related to business at all. Um, so I did A level geography, A level English, and A level. Um, oh gosh, I've forgotten biology. <laughs> ah, God. Okay. And Raj, you you. You, you, all three of you, but particularly I know this with you, Raj, you were at um, A levels during the pandemic, weren't you? Yeah. So yeah. it was quite so what did you do? difficult at the time. Um, I did yeah, physics. I imagine math it was absolutely impossible. So many numbers, so many essays to write, and then learning over the computer, which just wasn't the same as being in classroom. But anyway, what subjects did you do at A level, Raj? Physics, maths, and economics. Oh, fantastic. So hopefully you can see there's a range um, and um, the apprentices that people we have applying for apprenticeships do everything from BTECs all the way through to English, literature, drama, etc. Stefania, hello, yeah. or should yeah. I say Miss Caria? But anyway, you've got <laughs> a question. Then I want to get to this qualities one because it's a great sure. question. Just quick question. Do you require specific grades? Um, yeah, good question. Okay, so for we do for the degree apprenticeship. Let's just focus on that because the three people are um, doing some level of level six apprenticeship. We do require GCSE maths and English um, a pass. Uh, so four and above. Uh, we do prefer five, but we do. Um, and as I said, for different apprenticeships, level three and level four, we are much more flexible on that. You need to remember if you're applying for some form of level six um, apprenticeship or even level five, actually, where you would be doing a tertiary education, you absolutely have to have what the university needs. Now, we can have conversations if there are extreme circumstances. And last time with the pandemic, there were for some of our students, but ultimately, Ultimately, the university will make that decision and we can have very, um, shall we say, detailed and vibrant conversations to try to help the university see the case. But ultimately, you will be getting a degree that is your own from that university. And so the university needs to be sure that you've met what they believe their um, requirements would be. Does that answer that question correctly? And you um, need three yes. levels past level, obviously, to get in. Yeah. Yes. And uh, do you have um, um, specific university partners? Yeah, we absolutely do. Uh, so in England, we have Aston and um, Manchester. Raj, am I right in thinking that you're? Are you doing something at Manchester? I can't remember now. No, I am doing a doing it with Multiverse. So. Ah, right. Okay. So you're doing a level four with Multiverse. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But um, Georgia and Molly, am I right that you're both at Aston, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. I started at Multiverse. So I uh -huh. did a course Tell with Multiverse. And so I initially started with Multiverse and I did a course with them and then they, I wanted to go on to the degree. So I think that's a really good example of that CAP don't want you to stay in the role that you are and they're really looking to progress you in all types of um, role. So I went from a project management level four course and then I'm now on the um, Aston Chartered Management degree with Georgia. Ah, right. Lovely. Um, and, you know, we do we do work with um, Manchester as well. Um, so let's talk about these qualities. I love this question. So 
Should we pick on Georgia since she's gone first every time? Let's let's not change the pattern here. I'll get confused. I'm easily confused. So Georgia, what is one of the qualities you have that you think helped you get the job at Capgemini? Um, well, to, to sound modest, I like to think that I'm quite good at talking to people. Um, I like to think that I'm quite good at reaching out for help when I need it. Um, obviously, as I mentioned before, I kind of chose an apprenticeship which I decided then wasn't right for me. Um, it, it, you know, took took the courage to kind of say, oh, I'm not happy where I am. Please, can we have some conversations? Um, conversation led to conversation. I'm now really happy with where I am, the apprenticeship I'm on, the role that I do. Just being able to communicate with people, not being able, you know, not sitting to yourself and kind of being quiet, staying on mute. I think the working from home, we've kind of seen a lot more of that. Like people don't have to have a camera on, people don't have to come off mute. You can sit in two hour meetings and just not hear from people. Um, and I think, you know, the people that I've seen do really well at Capture and I are really friendly, really talkative and just want to, you know, get their opinion out there whenever they can. Um, so, yeah, yeah, just being able to communicate and portray your ideas. And those would be the qualities that have helped you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Molly, what about yourself? What's a quality that you've got that you think has helped you? Because everybody has different qualities and it's really important to stress here. There's no right or wrong answer here. But I will give I will give the game away in just a minute. But when I've heard from the apprentices, <laughs> Molly? Uh, I just really like talking to people. Um, okay. So even on the assessment centre, I was just talking to everyone. I was like, oh, what did you do at the weekend? <laughs> what do you have for lunch? Um, things like that. And it, they just get to see who you are. So for instance, when I was doing the assessment day, I really, really messed up on the presentation. Actually, this big presentation. And I was so nervous. I just completely messed it up. But they, they're not looking for someone that's excelling necessarily in doing that pre specific presentation. They're just looking for specific qualities like just being able to talk to people, as George said before. So one thing I would just build on what you said is, um, and I'd say it in a more corporate way than, than what Molly said, which is actually we are not looking for finished articles. So if you are perfect, do not apply, because what we are doing is we are taking young people who are finishing, who have just finished school or even when we take them from university and we are helping you become so much more than you would have done. If you know right now that you're perfect and you don't need anything. Um, you're not right for Cap Gemini. That, uh, that's the truth. And I recently had somebody who applied for an apprenticeship that I was recruiting for. And when I asked them the question about, you know, what support will you need? What training will you need? He told me he was good to go and he didn't need anything else from Cap Gemini. And he would be fine from day one to do all the work on his own. Sadly, he wasn't right for us. He might be right for another company, but he wasn't that that isn't the right mentality. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for people that do need development. Um, Raj, what would you like to offer? I'd say in terms of equality. I'd say as everyone's been saying, communication. But on top of that, like working in a team, in my yeah. group assessment, when I had to do a presentation, we worked in a team, we had to come up with a proposal and it's that ability to kind of get your head down and work no matter who you're working with. I would agree. I would also just build on one thing about the communication guys is um, and with all due respect to Molly, Georgia and Raj, they've all put their hand up to be part of National Apprentice Week. They've all put their hand up to come on and be on camera and talk to you today. There are plenty of our apprentices who for whom this would be a daunting task and who are not natural effervescent communicators and don't want to be put on the spot like that. That's absolutely fine. Hopefully over their apprenticeship and over their career development, they will learn those skills. So please don't look at the four of us here today and think I can only work for Cap Gemini if I could come on and do this and I'm too nervous. I have somebody in my team who would never do this in a blue fit. There's just no way she would not do this. It wouldn't matter how many times I asked her anything, but the work she does is superlative. What is important is that she can talk to me and she can talk to the team, but she doesn't want to come on something like this. So we we don't want, a, you know, and I always say this to young people because I think um, everybody's mentioned the assessment center. And one thing's really important about the assessment center and guys jump in if you think I've got it wrong here, but you have to be yourself. We have trained people. They know when you're not being yourself and you won't get through. And the other thing with the assessment centre is we are not looking for a hundred leaders of our business, right? We, we, you know, if we're going to hire a hundred people this, you know, in this month or the next six months or whatever to be apprentices, 
maybe one might be a future CEO. Um, so honestly, don't turn up at the assessment center thinking, unless I convince Capgemini that I can be the next CEO, I won't get the job because you won't get the job. That, that's the, the, the basis of it. Because who knows at 19, 20, 21, if one day you're going to be the MD or not. Who knows? It's impossible to tell. But Capgemini will give you the skills and the experience and the education to be the very best you can. Um, and it's important. I'm going to get to this question about the assessment centers in just a second. The age limit for your apprenticeships. I'm not sure, Lay, I hope I've said your name correctly. I'm not sure quite what the, um, the, the question relates to, but you would need to be a minimum of 16. In terms of upper age, doesn't matter. I mean, you can be an apprentice at any age, but generally speaking, our apprentices are a year, maybe straight from school, maybe a year out, maybe two years out. So it is not that common to have an apprentice join at 35 or 40. If we've not understood your question, they please um, come back on or go off mute or whatever and ask. And would we accept accountancy level two? It would depend on what you're applying to. I am on in LinkedIn, so if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Uh, there are two Michelle Perkins at Capgemini, which is incredible. Um, it's just such fabulousness, what can I say? Uh, I am the one with the black and white picture. So if you go on LinkedIn, and you connect up to me um, and you explain what you're looking for in terms of apprentice role and what that relates to the accountancy level. I will do my best to answer the question. Um, but again, Leigh, if you want to bring it to life and ask again, just let me know. Ah, who wants to take the question about what usually happens in an assessment centre? I could take this one. Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, Rod. So what, you, what happened in my assessment centre is that um, they start from the introduction, they'll talk to you a little bit about um, your specific role, why they cap, so you learn, you have a little bit of an insight of what you're getting into. And then they put you into two separate groups um, and they give you a project proposal that, or several project proposals that you need to choose from and pick which is the best one. And you're kind of presenting that to a, a panel or a board of people. And they're kind of looking at how you work together what are you um, what qualities do you have to work in a team and how you're presenting is not so much what you're saying but how you're doing the work and how you're saying it once the group assessments over they take you into your one-to-one -one interviews so they ask you questions about um, how you work um, who you are what you're looking to get out of cap what support you need and this is where it's quite crucial to be honest it's crucial that you kind of tell cap what you need what type of person you are because if you lie or you're not honest, they will see that. And more importantly, you're kind of not helping yourself when you do come to CAP and they won't support you in the right way. Once all of that's done, they give a final talk about what is to expected to come afterwards. And then you're just awaiting your phone call. Yeah. George and Molly, any builds from you on that in terms of an assessment centre? Oh, I didn't do one because of no. COVID. <laughs> yeah. It's, I was in person, so I was yeah, absolutely yeah. terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I wanted Raj to go first, because at the moment things are still virtual. We do know that everything's opening up um, and, you know, that will be um, arranged. The, the issue there is that it's actually really difficult to make a huge transition from being in person to going virtually like we did when the pandemic started that just took a couple of weeks and vice versa when we need to move back. So for the moment, uh, we would be looking at it probably a bit of a hybrid situation, give a chance to, you know, at the moment you do it um, uh, virtually, but there will hopefully be just opportunities very soon to come into the office and, and perhaps it'll be an insight event and things like that. I can't stress enough how important it is to do this kind of thing, to come along to this kind of event, listen to these kind of um, YouTube videos afterwards and all of that and to get the information that you want because this is the kind of thing that when you're applying to Cap Gemini. You can say, I heard Molly say da 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 da, you know, uh, you know, I was really interested because Raj talked about financial services and that's an industry I'm interested in. This helps you because we want to know that people really want to come and work for us. That's really, really important. The two key things when we're looking at the candidates, I think, 
other than you know people having the same values and ethics as Capgemini and being willing to learn and to grow with us as a company the two other things we really look for is a, a sort of a passion for technology a real um passion a real interest in technology you don't have to be a technologist molly um in particular talked about i'm not a technologist but i love I love how technology is helping our, you know, the whole, you know, world. I love how technology can have everything on your phone. I love all things like that. But I mean, I couldn't program anything. I haven't got a clue. But that doesn't matter. And the other thing we're really interested in is we want people who want to work for us. And you can't say you want to work for us if you know nothing about the company. It's just not believable. And it's only believable if you've actually looked at things like our ethics, our values and what we do, our clients. You've looked at some of the online stories. You've gone to events like this. And that's why it's really important when you do your interviews, when you do your application forms and all of that, that you share that you've taken a day out or an afternoon or a lunchtime or whatever it is to learn because otherwise it just isn't all that credible are there any other questions is there anything else that you guys would like to know about uh, Michelle I wanted to ask about your role do you directly work within the recruitment or HR team B yes yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, I report to Carolyn Miller, who is our UK HR director, and I run um, recruitment marketing and um, the programs we run for young people, so uh, junior talent initiatives, so things like schools program, etc. And then when you come, then so I suppose what I do is I work with young people before they would apply for Cap Gemini. Once they start to apply, so for example, Molly, Georgia and Raj all referenced events that somebody in my team or I would have been at. Um, so Raj referenced an event that we sent our um, UKMD, Paul Margetts, off to. Um, so my team organised all of that. Once you start to apply, then the recruitment team, we have a, a recruitment team who are all based on early recruitment specialists. They look after you. Then when you come in for the assessments and all of that, we have hiring managers, they look after you. And then once you've been offered a um, place, our onboarding team makes sure that you've got everything you need to have your first day at Capture Night, absolutely fabulous. And um, they also look after the inductions and all of that. And then once you arrive, we have a team um, who look after you as a um, an apprentice, which is all around your training and everything. And obviously Molly and Georgia and Raj all sit in business units so they have people in the business that look after them but we really have a, a, a way of looking after young people right now which is my team's responsibility all the way through to when you finish your apprenticeship and there's a, a team that look after that did i answer your question stefano yes absolutely thank okay, you okay so we've got a question here what is the process um do you need to be in employment no 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 you don't need to be employment you guys should be applying now for these apprenticeships absolutely if you're in year 13 you need to get on and apply for apprentices this minute um so the process really for applying for an apprentice at the moment is do your research, find out which ones you want to apply for. Hopefully they're Capgemini ones. Think about whether you want to be on the technology side, whether you want to be on the data side, like Raj talked about with his um, apprenticeship in FS, whether you want to be on the business, whatever you want, have a look on Capgemini. Don't just stick with Capgemini. Obviously we are better than everybody else, but you know, do go out and have a look and start applying. You if you want to have an apprenticeship starting this year, you need to be applying now. Um, we still have roles available for September 2022, so have a look, get on with it, um, and then you'll fill in an online application form once you've done that. Depending on how you do, you, um, you'll be invited to an assessment centre. Oh no, you'll be invited. I forgot a stage. You'll be invited um, to do um, an online digital interview, and then following that, the next stage is the assessment centre. And as Raj said, at the moment we do the assessment centre, which could be a different types of activities. Some will be along the lines of what Raj said. There'll be um, depending on the part of the business, etc. It could be slightly different, and then you would go into the interview, and then you go into the offer. Um, so hopefully that understands that. Um, 
yeah, there are uh, degree apprenticeships currently advertised. They're absolutely on our website. Uh, Stefani, what I'll do is I'll email those links over to you and you can share them with all the students. Great, um, thank you. But we are hiring for September and for November 2022. We are also hiring for June 2022, but it's the beginning of June. So unless some of the students have finished in terms mm -hmm. of exams and, and all of that, that probably won't work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're hiring. What cities are we based in? So Cap Gemini is actually based all the way from the very, very top of Scotland in the Highlands, where it's freezing cold, but beautiful, all the way down to Worthing on the south coast, which again has got a fabulous view of the um, sea and all of that. We are out west in Wales and on the east we have offices in places like uh, Newcastle and um, we have clients out in Anglia and Cambridgeshire and all sorts of things. So in other th words, we are based everywhere. Most roles will be based in London, the Highlands, Woking, Aston and Telford and Manchester. They will be the most, oh, and Cardiff. They will be the most common places that you would get a job with Cap Gemini. But as you're all aware that since the last two years, there's been a lot more remote working. And this has meant that we are now moving to a hybrid model where you'll spend some time working uh, remotely, probably at home, and sometimes working on client side or in the offices. So things are more flexible now than perhaps they were uh, two years ago. But Cap Gemini has always been a really, um, you know, uh, supportive of hybrid working, actually. So this is a model that we've had a lot of experience at. I hope, Brodie, that ex answers the question that you're asking. Um, I don't think I really understood this bit about do you need to be in employment? Um, I don't I don't think I understood that very well. So if, if you wanted to, to ask the question again, if I haven't an answered it, then I'm happy to do that. And again, you're welcome to come off um, mute if you want to just ask us. Uh, Stefania, from your point of view, any yeah. other questions? Yes, I know you said to apply now for um, apprenticeships, but when do um, applications open, generally speaking? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So quite often um, applications are always ongoing and we are currently updating ongoing. Okay. new, new um, roles. But you will find the majority, like Capture and I, we released um, in November. So November 2021, we released a, a lot of our roles. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, there's um, off opportunities coming about. Sometimes there's been growth in business or a new client demand or a new project or something like that. And we might decide that some of the roles could be apprentice roles. So they might go up, um, you know, later than that. But mostly, most companies sort of tune it. So it's kind of around the same time as students start doing the UCAS roles. So for 2020 two and 2023 that's what I would say but definitely you know if you want to get a role this year when you you leave um, college then please get out there and have a look and start applying absolutely great thank you and uh, my final question do you have any upcoming events for careers week um we we are doing an event on the 8th International Women's Day. I'm doing yeah. quite a big event and I'll send the link for that. Amazing. We have some other events in um, bits and pieces in some of our locations that will be remote. I can send you those. Um, we have a few things, yes, coming up. Absolutely. And we will be, um, because obviously restrictions are uh, being um, lifted slowly or maybe not so slowly, depending on your opinion, um, we will be in a position to be able to offer more events. And I would just say, guys, you know, make sure that you keep looking out for all these sorts of things um, so that you can you can go to these some of these events. And and the one I'll send you, which is on the 8th of uh, March, although it's for International Women's Day, it is not female exclusive. There will be the, the thing that will be exclusive is that it will be women bringing their stories, but we won't be just talking about women in technology. And that is run by one of our um, partners and they will have an awful lot of um, other speakers, not just Cap Gemini there. So, you know, if you're interested in other technology roles, they will have a lot of them on that event as well. But young men are just as in, um, invited to that event as young women. It's just a chance to make sure the panels have got female representation.
So I feel free to come regardless of anything. Because, you know, the Cap Gemini is a very inclusive company and we do our very best to make sure that, you know, um, people from underrepresented groups, whether that's race, gender, religion, um, you know, postcodes, all sorts of things, find a really happy place at Cap Gemini. It's very important to us. So, you know, and, and I'd also say to the young people listening today that if you have a barrier to employment, you know, maybe that's a a disability. Maybe I had someone um, email this me this morning um, with um, something around autism. Um, we, we're actually running an intern program uh, with Ambitious about autism. You know, the worst thing you can do is after everything's happened. You've had all of your your um, application in. You've done your mock. Uh, you've done your assessment center, etc. The worst is to then say, oh, if I I didn't tell you, but Kind of thing. If you feel that there's a reason, um, thank you, Lay. Nice to see you. Bye bye. Um, if you feel there's a, something that you need in terms of support, please reach out. Please don't leave that until the very last minute when it's all happened and say, oh, I should have told you I'm a wheelchair user, or I should have told you that I, I need longer to answer the questions, or, or, you know, I'm not comfortable on camera, or whatever it is. Please go to the person who is recruiting and explain the difficulty and they will talk to you. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're coming in to work for a big professional corporate organisation. You won't be the first person who's gone to the recruiter and said, I need extra help because, you know, I, I don't, I'm not promising we can make everything happen. But what I am promising is that we will listen to you and we will do our very best um, to, to help you through the process. You know, some things are easier than others, but please don't wait until afterwards and then think, oh, I wish I'd said. Anything else from the from you, Stefania? Is that enough? Uh, no, like it's. Uh, I just would like to thank you. It's been such an session. insightful and informative session and I really like that you highlighted that uh, um, Capgemini is focused on potential and developing apprentices and you are not expecting finished articles. We don't, it's not even that we don't expect, we don't want. We, uh, yeah, exactly, you don't Absolutely. want. I, I, I just, I wasn't meaning to correct you, of course, mm -hmm. Stefania, but the yeah. thing is that it's very, it's very difficult, I think, for young people to go into an interview and do exactly what Raj said, to be honest about themselves mm -hmm. and to say, I'm nervous to present or I've never done X. Or, but, you know, I mean, you want to showcase your talents, don't you? You don't want to come into an interview and say, I can't do these 20 things and leave. You want to be able to say, these are the things that I'm really good at. So spend time thinking about what are you really, really good at and then be really cognizant of the things that you need more help for as you to use your word, which I love, which where is your potential that you've yet to develop? That's absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and it sounds that uh, um, your company is an environment when one can be authentic and, and you re reward uh, uh, this. Uh, yeah, because we're, we're going out to our clients, you know, often the teams will not be in the office or even when we're working on teams. Some people spend their whole day talking to clients and not cap Gemini people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that means that, you know, our clients are full of all sorts of different people from the UK and all around the world. We need all sorts of people. So, yeah, absolutely. Authenticity is really important. Yeah. And it helps if you can be authentic. And and actually, I don't know what everybody else thinks, but it's so much easier to concentrate on your job and be good if you don't, if you're not pretending to be someone else. Guys, do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Anything okay, else so we could help you with? No, that's uh, that's all. Thank you. You covered uh, a lot and uh, you provided uh, very helpful information and advice. Thank you. Thank you all. And you. Um, I hope uh, uh, all um, the students have enjoyed the session and um, they will uh, uh, keep uh, accessing apprenticeship content through the uh, YouTube channel. Brilliant. And when you've thank got you. it, please whack it over to us so we can oh, share it if we want. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> OK, thank right, you thank all. You. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Thanks, Molly, Georgia and Raj. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.